All right, good afternoon. Uh, follow up from last time we spoke, just touch base on scholarship numbers. We're going to be either at 79 or 80 heading into the fall. Uh, six of those former walk-ons were put on scholarship. Uh, we'll always evaluate um, our current walk-ons at the end of camp if we have if we have guys that are deserving uh, of being put on scholarship and those type of things. Um, recruiting, kind of going back, 19 classes full, uh, all 25 spots filled, uh, counting two two spots forward in the 20 class. So that's what kind of where we're at from a scholarship standpoint. Uh, going back to four days in now, uh, yesterday was probably our best work we've had of the four. Um, you know, I thought we uh, really competed with well. some really high points on offense, high points on defense. Uh, we're doing, a, we're two spotting in practice. So um, every team period, every group period we have, we have a gold unit and a blue unit. So we're getting compounded reps. And what I mean by that, if we're doing a seven on seven period, um, we, we're getting 32 reps. You know, every time we're going eight minutes or seven or eight minutes, but we're getting 32 reps. We've got 16 on one field, 16 on, on the other. So. Um, everybody in our program right now is getting reps in all of our group and, and team activities. So uh, getting a lot of evaluations done. Uh, this is an install. Uh, from an install standpoint, we're still throwing a lot at them. Um, the, the older kids are, are obviously a little bit further ahead just because they've been here. Been pleased with some of the athleticism in our freshman class. I like what that group's about. All right? From the time they came in early June uh, up until now, they've handled themselves the right way. They've prepared the right way. That's a, that's a good class of good people. Whether, whether at football-wise, it's probably yet to be determined how many of them are going to play. I think it's too early. I think there will be several, though. Um, today, really disappointed in today's work. Uh, we, it's kind of a recovery day. We're out there for, for true work for probably about an hour, and I thought it was unfocused. Um, and probably our most disappointing of the four. Um, and so we've got to get better. Our, I just didn't like our approach. You know, you got to have a, a mature approach. Um, I thought we were mentally weak today, four days in, um, and so we've got to improve that. With that, I'll open up questions. You know, what have you seen from the quarterback so far through just a couple of days? Yeah, so y'all got to watch practice too, and I think that was probably similar how it's gone for, for the four days. I think um, some, some highs and some lows. They're getting more reps than they did in the spring just because we've got more bodies. Um, uh, Jack and, and Austin probably have the best understanding of what we're doing um, right now. Um, you know, it's a little slower for them. I think that uh, our completion percentages and, and our decision making are up from the spring, which is which is a positive. Uh, I think Trey Lowe has really came. I thought he had his best day yesterday. I thought he, I thought he had a really solid day. Um, it's slowing down for him. We, we still got to remember he's a freshman, red shirt freshman, and uh, so the game's slowing down. And then. Um, and then Davey's done some, some positive things. He can, he can throw the football, he's real poised. Um, it's, uh, he's getting accustomed to how we do things just because these are his first practices. But I'm pleased where they're at, um, but we've got a long way to go also. You know, where are your running backs in terms of being receivers? Do you see the flank run on occasion, throw it to him a good bit, better than you thought? Yeah, so, well, it's something we really, coming out of spring, we realized that Hey, we've got some talent at running back. We're going to have to use them in a variety of ways. So we challenge, particularly Sinkfield and McCoy, you know, to really work on some receiving skills, route running, those type of things during the summer. And we are. I mean, and I think they, they're going to help us in those spots. We're going to give us some versatility, what we're doing offensively. They'll stay in safe uh, personnel groupings and present different formations. So, yes, I, I am. I'm pleased with where both of those guys are as far as learning. That always is getting better at it as well. Coach, what is adding – you know, maybe to this team being, I mean, obviously he seems like the most experienced guy pretty much out of anybody that was eligibility is in the year. Does he add anything and maybe any expectations? Yeah, well, he's, he has. He, he does have more experience than any other quarterback in our room. Um, not from an age standpoint, but just from a game's play standpoint. Um, I think the other thing, too, is, you know, they lost some games. They had some struggles with Bowling Green, so he knows how to overcome adversity. I think that's um, – he could probably shake off bad plays and shake off hard coaching a little bit quicker maybe the other ones right now just because he had to go through some of that. Um, but, yeah, I think it helps in that room. You know, um, played in a very similar system in high school. Um, a lot of the same pass concepts of Bowling Green um, under the previous coaching staff. So um, I think it's a positive. You know, like I said, whether he'll be ready to go or eligible for this year is to be determined. 
but I do I do like where he's at. I think he's done a really good job over the last couple of months working on his body, you know, and uh, so that's 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 positive to him. When you talked about practice today. Were you upset with the missed assignments, execution, enthusiasm? No, I just I didn't like our mental approach at all, John. I thought that it was very immature. You know, I didn't think I thought our leadership was lacking. Um, it was a little hot. We're day four into it, and uh, I just didn't think we responded very well. I thought that, you know, the whole deal is, and, and I believe this, if you, if you do little things right and you prepare and you work hard, then good things are going to happen. But I think the opposite is also true. If you're not mentally prepared, if you're not taking care of your body, okay, if you're not focusing on details, well, the same, in the same aspect, that ball will find you and you will be exposed. And we had some guys get exposed today because they weren't ready to go. How do you feel about punting? Yeah, next question. <laughs> so, I don't know yet. I don't you know yet. Having um, Hensley and Benton out there in white, not red, not green, um, mm -hmm. what does that mean for you? What do they have to do to get where you need to be? Yeah, I think Adam has done extremely well. You know, his injury happened quite a bit later right. than the other ACL guys. Um, and he put in a ton of work. Like, he, he, um, his rehab has been off the charts, according to Vince and our, and our athletic training crew. So pleased with him. Um, and then Charlie is, you know, really worked hard, especially over the last couple months, put himself in position. Um, they're a little bit behind as far as learning. Uh, we need for both those guys, uh, particularly Hensley, he can be a factor for us on special teams. Um, he's just playing catch up a little bit because he didn't have those reps in the spring. But um, it is good. It should be should be noted as well. Our, I thought I think our athletic training staff did a did a great job getting those guys ready in a, in a pretty efficient time. You don't have to name names, but when you speak of mental weakness, what are some specific? No, I just think it's, I think it happens. In, in, I'm disappointed in two areas. Okay, so first one is guys that have, have played meaningful snaps, and they should be able to overcome some adversity, whether it's the number of practices, whether it's their little fatigue, uh, whether it's just coach-created adversity. Okay, they should be able to overcome. And I think some of our older guys handled that as well. And then we got some younger guys that are having to transition. Maybe they were red-shirted, maybe they were high school players, but they're having to transition. And where we're at as a football program, they're going to be counted on. And they understand that. I've told them, hey, your development is fast-forwarded. Okay, whether you like that or not, whether we like it or not as coaches, it is what it is. And your development is fast-forwarded. And to do that, you've got to have a mental approach where I want to attack every single day to get better. And I thought we had the mentality in both those groups a little bit today as they were going to get through this and, and, and not improve at this. During the uh, individual competition, mm -hmm. Saint made a pretty nice catch. It was a great play. Of, yeah, pretty good coverage, too. Yeah, it's a great play. So, Hickey, I'm, have, I'm sorry to have you guys officiate these. Uh, um, uh, when you all come out to practice, the caveat is you have to officiate the competition. Uh, <laughs> but the DB knew immediately to weigh them out. <laughs> oh, I know. So. Yeah, they, uh, no, it was. Those competitions are fun, you know. I, I make this comment sometimes, but you think about college football. You know, we're really the only game where you go sit down for 20 minutes and then come out and play. You know what I mean? Like, you go sit in the locker room for like 20 minutes and you come out and play. So we try to simulate a practice where, all right, we try to go to something full speed immediately. Today it was one-on-one -on -one reps. You know, later on, once we get our team, like I think tomorrow, we kick in and it's. You know, it's a full speed 11 on 11 drill right out the gate, and it makes them have to be ready. Uh, we had we had a couple of good competitions today. I thought that uh, uh, Keith Washington going against Sam James in uh, in one on one, that was a competitive uh, period. Keith Keith won that battle, and then Sinkfield um, came out with uh, Tyke Smith, and he's a guy that I'm excited about. And they battled. Tyke had great coverage. Jack threw a pretty ball, and Sink made a great catch and held onto it when he hit the ball when he hit the ground. So. That was fun. Good way to start. Neil, what are the benefits uh, of the over the summer uh, players only workouts? And what, what, what benefits do they get out of that? So, from a from a defensive standpoint, it's communication, all right, especially in the secondary, all right. From an offense standpoint, it's timing. Okay. Now, about there's there's the reverse of that too. There's some things where they're not getting watched, they're not getting coached, so they're getting bad habits. So the repetitions are far more important, but early in fall camp, and it's probably the same way across college football, is 
now that they're got coach getting coached on every single rep and there's film involved and all those type of things, we got to break these habits that they formed over the summer. Maybe that's jogging on off the field. Maybe that's being in a lazy stance. Maybe that's not running to the ball. Okay, because that happens over the summer where they're not getting constantly reminded. Um, so we're fighting a little bit of that. But I think the reps and the reps on offense, communication on defense. How about the leadership roles that some guys there are, have to take? There are. That, that is important. That's important. It's a uh, – and basically what we've done with that is um, a lot of that happens in the, in the strength, in the weight room as well because – so coming out of the spring, the players in each position groups ID'd who they felt like their leaders were. Coaches okayed it, but we let the players ID who they thought the leaders were in their position groups. Um, and once those guys were ID'd, we went, we went through a process of training those guys, how we thought were the best way to lead th that particular position group. And then they led uh, uh, different aspects of the off-season off -season condition. Bryce Wheaton, the guy you mentioned the other day, someone you thought had a pretty good summer, now that had a couple days of fall camp. What do you think of what he's been doing? He would be our most improved player from spring ball um, to right now. Yeah, from guys that went through spring to guys now, um, he would be the most improved player. And uh, he did. He and, I, and I'll say this, like he had a lot of adversity in spring. Things didn't go the way he wanted to. He probably got coached harder than he's been coached before. Um, um, he got beat a lot. And rather than tucking his tail and, and, and being – sad about it or not doing it, you know. He went to work, he approached it, took ownership of it, that it wasn't good enough. And, you know, he was the, I think if you go back and look at social media, he was the, the workout warrior of the week multiple times. He was one of the highest graded players coming out of summer workouts, according to our strength staff. And he's been really productive. He's been really productive. And he's made catches on contested balls the last three practices. First practice, it was a little, little, little sluggish by him. And it's hard, not sluggish, his effort was good, but, 50-50 balls, he didn't make as many. The last three days, he's made a lot of contested plays, which which is what we need from him. And he's a guy, he's as talented as anybody we have in our program. Did uh, Tommy Bowden have any wisdom to share with you, or is it just? He looked good, didn't he? He looks, he looks young. You know, he got out young. Uh, <laughs> no, he, uh, he, uh, no, it's good. You know, he, he's welcome here anytime. And, you know, he, uh, uh, he and Vic and, and Ron West, they all work together at Clemson. So, I think that guy gave him added incentive to get here as well. Neil, assuming you informed your team that you were disappointed with your efforts today. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, as a coach now, the response I would imagine is going to be huge for you to see if it corrects or if it doesn't. You'll, you'll learn a lot, is that correct? Sure. How they respond now? Yeah, yeah I think part of it too is coaches, we got to do a better job getting them ready to go. Coaches aren't any, it's the same way. You know, day four, they've been up here all day for four days in a, or three and a half days in a row now. As coaches, we got to do a better job getting them ready, and that starts with me. And so I think it's on us, too, uh, to get them ready. And, and tomorrow we're going to have our hardest practice of fall camp. That would have been the case if we had our, our best practice today. But we're going to have our hardest. And the first time we put full pads on tomorrow, we're going to do a lot of 11-on-11 11 11 work. And so I am. I am. I'm very interested in, in how we're going to approach tomorrow. How much better do you feel now about the receiving depth than when you took over the team? And <laughs> yeah. If you all remember, I told you back in our, uh, at some point during the, the spring, I said our receiver uh, room is going to look a lot different. So, and it does. You know, it's we, we, we made a 180 since the since spring. We're playing at a lot higher level. Um, guys know how to practice. So, now we've got to do it. we got to go out and do it in a scrimmage type and then a game type atmosphere. Um, but I am much happier about where those guys are at, where that room's at now, than at any point during the spring. Will the talent level is you? The, the talent. The talent level is improving. Talent level is improving. And we've got guys that are working toward their potential now. Along those lines, offensive line, where are you at now? Well, we've, you know, I think Colton McKivitz, who sometimes get lost. And this is, if I was going to list guys right now four days in, okay, now we'll give an award at the end of camp. But on offense, most of the players would be Bryce Wheat, second would be Kobe Kibbins. Okay, and he played at a high level in the spring. But he really attacked, you know, I really challenged him. I thought he was pretty good in the spring. And, and I think he really strives to be better than pretty good. I think he strives to be great. 
strives to be a high round draft pick, strives to be an all Big 12 player. Um, and again, go back and look at those workout warriors, multiple, I think he graded out uh, from the strength staff, the highest of anybody during the all season program uh, in his position or in his position group in, in O-line, D-line as a total. Um, so pleased with him. Kelvin Wickline is, um, he continues to improve. Thought he got steadily better as we went through spring. Uh, he's, he's in the best shape he's ever been. So uh, he's been solid. Uh, Josh Sills uh, has an opportunity to be an upper end player in our league. Um, I think Mike Brown continues to improve. Uh, Chase at center is a little inconsistent. I like for him to, and I think he has the capabilities. Uh, he's got really good, a lot of the attributes we look for in a center, he has them. He's got to play a better pad level. And that's a challenge to him. Um, but then we've got to get some depth, you know, and that's why we get in full pads tomorrow um, and we can really go to work and work on our run game and things. That's where we need to see, okay, who's going to be our six, who's going to be our seven. We've got to have eight guys. You've got to have a minimum of eight guys ready to play in this league. And it's going to be a great competition over the next two weeks to see who six, seven, eight is going to be. You look at your offense, your two best pro prospects could be those two alignment, possibly. Yeah, I think we got some young guys that are going to be down the road. Down the yeah, road, right, yeah. But yeah. right now, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I think Kenny McCoy has a, has an opportunity to, okay. you know, Ian Petaway or both. Um, you know, if you're looking at early early draft grades, yeah. you know, that, I think that's probably a fair assessment. What about keeping uh, a guy like Kelvin? Because that's a very unique situation. It is unique. I think it speaks to him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he's very mature. Mm -hmm. It is. That's a it's a it's a tough situation. What what has Colton gotten better? at? I think he's pass set. Pass set. Um, I think he's, he has less wasted movement. I think he plays with better bend. I think his first step is more explosive. Um, he's stronger at the point of contact. I understand physically he's improved too. About 315, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He I, think he, I think he feels really comfortable with the way he's at. Yeah, he's said, I think, several freshmen could play and it's too early, but that four game thing gets it does. Some people are in front of the season, back in the season. Some people won't even have a, yeah. uh, it's, it's a prescription. What do you do with it? So what we'll do is, so at the end of this, kind of after our second scrimmage, it's basically we'll take a couple of days. The, the players have got some, they're not necessarily off the whole time, but they've got off days built in, but we don't really practice as much. So as coaches, we go and we try to plan out our year, honestly. And uh, so the new retro rule is great. But there's some strategy that goes into it, you know, because what you want to do is you don't want to necessarily just play everybody in the non-conference or everybody right out the gate because if you have injuries later in the season, you don't have those in the bank. So it takes some strategy and we'll really form those in 48 hours kind of right after our, our second scrimmage. You mentioned Bryce. Anybody on defense pop out to you that's improved since the spring? Uh, Jeffrey Pollard's having, you know, I think he's fundamentally um, – on defense, he, he's he's doing a nice job. Um, you know, Jared Bartlett's a freshman at the banded position that's done well. Uh, Quandarius Qualls, you know, Q would be the other guy defensively that's kind of made a lot of improvement. You know, and it's time to send it for him. Um, very mature guy, but he's, he's had a good start as well. And he gives you some flexibility 